There's even a word vitamin. We got to break that down. Your vitamin, vita, vitality from the sun. Amen, amen, ra. Because in Kemet, they believed in the sun god. Because they knew when the sun goes up, all right, that's when I wake up. When it's a sunny day, I'm in a better mood. When the sun goes down, I think it's time to sleep. T Walk the Hawk, also known as the Holistic God. You know, I blew up by posting testimonials, brand new testimonials every single day for over two years and five months straight at the time of this recording. That ain't going to stop. People no longer having high blood pressure, cholesterol, cancer, diabetes, you name it. No longer on them capsules, no longer having anxiety, and it goes on. I don't stop. I never miss a day to my Instagram stories. All right, so t we're going to get straight into this, right? You're a big herbalist, right? Now, what is your story that led you to become an alkaline vegan? coach that still heals many people today my story really what got me into it i come from i played basketball in high school so i always been athletic one state championship all that stuff so i always wanted to stay active so when i didn't make it to the nba of course i started working out and got into fitness but really what got me into the holistic health side is my mom went to the white coats we gotta be careful on youtube with the words we're using so we're gonna say the white coats and they told her she had at the time lupus and with that they told her that and then a few months later oh you got scleroderma which is another autoimmune disease and then they said oh we're not sure if you got that so at that point dad told her she had about five years to live so you know i'm panicking i believe i'm probably 19 at the time I'm, I'm not ready to lose my mom yet like what is this let me figure this out obviously i know health i know fitness but i don't know what to do for this so i started researching that's when i came uh, came along Dr. Sebi, I found Lila Africa, Dr. Morris, uh, and many others. So I really just start digging into it, start studying chemistry, studying all of them, watching nonstop videos on YouTube, just doing everything I can to get this knowledge. I also reached out to someone who traveled the world with Dr. Sebi and, uh, and to the family. And at the time, I couldn't afford what they wanted me to spend. Mm -hmm. So that's why I really was like, I'm going to figure this out myself. So that's what got me into it. And speaking of that, my mom's still alive, so the white coats were wrong again. <laughs> mm. All right, so when you stopped eating meat, how fast did you notice internal changes within your mood and your lifestyle every day? So for me, I want to go back to my upbringing. So I was brought up on all the meats, all the red meats, the pork, meatloaf, you name it, <laughs> macaroni and cheese, mm -hmm. everything. So it was a, it wasn't a, I didn't go cold turkey. I did my best to go cold turkey, but I would I would be alkaline, plant-based, and then I would have a bad stressful day at work and go to Burger King. That's how it was for a few months. But when I really dialed in, man, I, I come from severe anxiety. For those of you that don't know my story, I had crippling anxiety, was rushed to the hospital month after month. They would pump me full of volume, jaw shaking, locked up, couldn't move, was on the couch, like didn't know how I was gonna make it another day. And it got to the point where non-stop in my head i was saying the s word like self-harm i'm careful with my language i was telling myself to self-harm myself mm. and i had never had that thought before right. so at that point i'm like i can't keep playing around and i had already known a lot but i was kind of pushing it to the side like many of us do right, right. like most of us know the basics especially people in, on this channel mm -hmm. like y'all know about dr sabi y'all know about cmos mm -hmm. y'all know about staying away from the right, right. from the rib meat from right. the pork mm -hmm. the eggs and all that but are you willing to do it? Right. So it got to the point where I was willing to do it because I didn't know how I was gonna survive another day. Also, I come from being a bodybuilder. Mm. So I was heavy on lifting the weights. I was 275, I'm only about 220 right now. Mm. So I was 275 every time I go to the gym. How much you bench everywhere I go? How big are your arms? My arms used to be 20 inches. I bench 500 pounds. So I come from all that, but just cause I looked the part, didn't mean I was healthy. Mm. So at that time, that's when I had my worst anxiety attacks. That's when I had sleep apnea. For those of you that don't know what that is, I would be asleep and in the middle of the night I wake up like choking, feeling like I was having a heart attack. I had the worst back pain. I couldn't walk on the treadmill. I couldn't run. Only thing I could do was elliptical because my back was so inflamed because I was eating those inflammatory foods. Because the red meat is high in uric acid, the pastas are high in phytic acid, or sorry, carbonic acid, the beans are high in phytic acid, and then your dairy is high in lactic acid. So if every meal of the day you're eating acid, you wonder why you got inflammation because you're eating nothing but inflammatory foods. You wonder why you got acid reflux because you're eating nothing but inflammatory foods. So once I really tapped into that and stopped playing games with my health, that's when I made the change, and that took me into helping other people, which I wanna, I wanna talk about what really 
made me transition into helping other people. If you want me to go into that, or is going to. So I have been studying this information, like I said, from the time my mom got diagnosed. So I had known about it for a good seven, eight years. And like I said, I was already practicing it for at least three to four years. But I almost was afraid to talk about it because I had heard about Dr. Sabi and how holistic healers, these things seem to happen to them. And I didn't know how people were going to take it because it's controversial information, as they said. Right. So I was still teaching general like health and fitness, like eat white rice, eat, eat chicken, <laughs> even though I knew that's not what I'm doing. That's not what was right. I just got to be honest. Right, right. And I was working a job and I was living in Utah at the time. I got into a really bad car accident to keep the story short. Uh, banged out. I was in the fast lane, hydroplaned, slammed into the wall, slid down the median. Uh, nice family pulled me out, like carried me. I didn't know, you know, with the adrenaline running. I didn't know if I was hurt. I'm touching myself. They're like, you good. They called the ambulance, all that. So at that point, I realized like, man, that could have been my last day. I have all this information that I know can save tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. And they almost didn't get that information. So literally from that day, the very next day, I locked myself in the garage and I was making 20 TikTok videos, 20 Instagram videos a day, recording, editing, telling everything I knew about holistic health, alkaline diet and all that. Wow. So that's really how it happened. Like it really came organically, but it took it took that moment for me to realize, man, life's short, and so many people's out here hurting. I feel my reason for being on this earth is to make sure people live a longer, healthier, more functional life. So what about like how did you feel though when you actually was on the diet of alkaline alkalinity? How did you feel? Did you feel better? Like did you have better emotions? Did you oh yeah. Feel that you didn't have meat. Much it's, better. They say always say meat is bad for you. And it's not just bad for you physically, it's bad for you emotionally. It makes you mm -hmm. sad. So did you feel like more happy? For sure, because all the hormones are pumping into the meat, the steroids and all that stuff. And on top of that, everything else that's wrong with meat, how it's causing that inflama inflammation, the chemicals they're using, the red dye 40s to keep the red meat red. Mm -hmm. They're pumping it full of carbon monoxide to make it maintain the red color. So I always say there's not really such thing as red meat. Of course, if you hit an animal on the side of the road, it's going to be red. But if you take it home, you set it on your counter for two days, it's going to turn gray or a dark brown. So when you go to the meat section in the store and you see all that bright red meat, that's only because a few things. They pump it full of carbon monoxide, they use food colorings to keep it red, and then also they use modified air packaging. That's where they fill the packaging, packaging with carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide also to maintain that color as a preservative. Can you go on to us, what is powder yeah. eggs? Not only are they going to cause that mucus build up in your body, but also you got to think like, do we really think about, about what we're eating? Because the egg that's literally the aborted baby fetus of a chicken. And then you say, oh, well, I just eat the egg white. The egg white is literally the amniotic fluid that the fetus was living in. And then on top of that, you cook that, you scramble it together. So you scramble the aborted chicken fetus with the amniotic fluid that it was living in. And then you fry up its mom, the chicken, and have that all together. Like, think about how how crazy that sounds okay, like that sounds, outrageous. <laughs> that sounds outrageous and you know well a lot of people don't know that it's not good for your health but like we got to start taking things into accountability like man like who would make somebody do that <laughs> you know, that's wild but i come from that so i understand when you grow up on that and that's all you know you know nothing else that's why i'm here to bring you this information and improve your health um, also to you also you have you healed thousands of people and you still are how does it truly make you feel to have an impact on humanity with your voice well it's a what's, what's the phrase it's a double-edged sword because with what I do every single day I wake up to new emails new TikTok messages Instagram messages YouTube comments Instagram comments before and after photos um, video testimonials of people saying they long, they no longer have these diseases their doctor can't believe it they're off of these capsules you know what I mean so that obviously feels good I can't have a bad day when that's what I wake up to literally every single day but on the other side of things you gotta understand every time I open my messages every time I look at my comment section Hey, T-Walk, uh, just reaching out. Uh, my mom just found out she has the highest level cancer and has a week left to live. Or my cousin uh, has been trying to have a kid for 10 years and it hasn't happened. Or so my family member just lost her leg from diabetes or lost her eyesight. So seeing her every single day, like it really hurts my soul. Like, so I'm really passionate about what I do, but it's not easy to wake up and see that every day. 
but to be able to see that I am making an impact and sparking the minds of tens of thousands of people, if not millions, that's what I'm here to do is spark somebody's mind to make them at least realize that they can heal themselves naturally. Yeah. And you're definitely being rewarded good karma for that too, just know that. For sure, yeah, that's the, that's the goal is just to help as many people as possible. The more positive energy you put out, the more you get back. Yeah. And you just, I just keep pushing no matter what. Like I said, I'm a high school dropout. Now I teach for a living. Don't let anything hold you back when it comes to your health. Stop saying, I'm sick. I got this, this illness. Start saying, I'm healthy. I'm just dealing with a little setback. I'm going to get through it. Stop saying, I'm a high school dropout. Start saying, I'm a genius. <laughs> like, that's how I think. Every day I wake up, I'm the holistic guy. That's how I think. You should think of yourself as a God. If you're religious, if you're not religious, if you are religious, you believe in God, then that means you part God, at least. So I'm at least part God, and I teach holistic health. And I'm posting more testimonials than most, but I love to see all the other people out there that's doing it too. I love to see it. And I want to talk about, before you go on to the next question, I want us in the holistic health community, the alkaline community, the plant-based community, to start showing more love to each other. Because since I got in this community, I started seeing a lot of beef, a lot of drama, I'm going to be honest. And that kind of threw me off because when you think about holistic health, you think about people in a positive mindset, people that's really out here pushing the agenda to help the masses. So when we're arguing amongst, you, amongst each other, one person might say apple cider vinegar is great. Right. I might not recommend it. That doesn't mean I hate you. Right. right? I might post testimonials. You can too. As long as I'm helping people and somebody else is also, I got no ill will against you. Do your thing. You get as many people as possible to heal, and that's what we're here to do. So stop the hate, stop the drama. Let's team up. I was talking to my homie. I'm like, man, I want to do a roundtable of like the most well-known people. Yeah, I was just about to ask you that. Uh, within the within the herbalist community, you yeah. got Yaki Awaken, you got uh -huh. Life Wave, you got even the the past Doctor Savi, you got yeah. uh, Official Loaded Lows. Out of all these herbalists, which ones have inspired you a lot to really like just learn more knowledge on your niche? Yeah, and I don't mind giving people a shout out. Like for me, like I said, first obviously is Dr. Sebi. Then I came along to Dr. Africa, then Dr. Morse, who's still alive, still doing it. And then my boy told me a few months ago, well, this is probably like six months ago about Yaki, came across him. I liked his delivery. I've seen the testimonials, came across him. I'm new to seeing Life Wave, so shout out to him. Uh, one of the women is doing it, uh, surviving vegan. Yes, so she doing nice. her thing. Uh, who else? And so many more. So many more people. And again, I think the people would love if we came together. Right. Just did it round. Like imagine a round table with me, Yaki, surviving vegan, yeah. whoever else you could think of. Like I'm, really. I'm pretty sure we'll get that together. Right, yeah. You know, I'll give Yaki up with you. We all get this, make this happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that would be. It's 2022. We gotta make it happen. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with building. I'm yeah. down with building because it's only going to spark more minds, help more people heal. Right, right. Uh, so I looked at your Instagram and you stated that you were the son of an addict and you grew up around mm -hmm. Okay. So, Leon Vardy, how this upbringing transformed T-Walk into modern time? Mm, that's a good question. Yeah, so to go into my story a little bit, I grew up in Martinsburg, West Virginia, a small town in West Virginia. I got my first house in Hedgesville, West Virginia. The population there is 300 people. So I'm from a small town, but my upbringing, my father was a, we'll say a white rockhead, um, just for censorship, right? So I grew up around that. He would do it in front of me in the car right next to me. He abused my mother, domestic violence. Uh, my brother was one of the most well-known drug dealers in the town. So we had a small bedroom with two twin sides beds in it, with just a little room for walking space. All I seen every day, all day, is every narcotic you can think of, every, every uh, type of powder, everything you could think of. In my face, I'm just playing a game, playing live back then, like trying to stay focused. And uh, guns nonstop, people running up into, into the house, breaking into the house. Like this was my upbringing. So a lot of what you would consider trauma, so that I believe is what caused the anxiety in the first place. But also the foods that I was eating was causing the anxiety. So of course the traumas are gonna cause anxiety, depression, stress, but also the food is damaging your nervous system, it's damaging the neurotransmitters in your brain. A lot of these foods, the artificial flavors, ingredients, preservatives, sweeteners, they were literally known as behavior modifiers. If you look up the Nuremberg trials, they were literally called behavior modifiers back then. So they're modifying our behavior. But to go back to my story, that, that was something that obviously affected me like it would anybody. But what I tell you to do is look back at your life, 
I recommend not regretting anything because that's what shapes you, that's what forms you, that's what molds you. And to know that I was able to tap into something into my into my brain and into this universe to realize I'm not gonna let that hold me back, right? Because I didn't speak. And my hometown people know me as not speaking. Now I speak for a living, I teach for a living. Yeah, so really tapping into yourself, not caring what people think, going as hard as you can every single day. If you do something consistently for every single day for 10 years, like it's almost impossible for you to not be further along in your life. And you gotta realize that you can do it. Stop thinking you need outside forces. Stop thinking you need to be on these things that the white coach is recommending. Like, because for me, I had, you can hear it now when I talk, like there's no shame in my game. I still stutter sometimes. I was told I had, I used to have a horrible speech impediment. I used to get taken out of class for stuttering. I was told I had ADHD, ADD. They wanted to put me on Ridlin. Now, if they would have put me on Ridlin, and I was on Ridlin for um, many years, the world wouldn't know me because I'd be in zombie mode. I'd be zombie mode like this. I'd be calm. Y'all would have never knew my personality because I would have been a whole another person. So understand, understand that you can do it. You can make it happen. You just got to start telling yourself. One of my phrases also, I don't believe in if, try, can't, almost, or maybe. I get it done, no excuses, nothing to it, but to do it, point your finger in the mirror if you blew it. Take accountability and do what you got to do because it's that simple. And by the way, I ain't let y'all know, follow my Instagram. I got two because you know they keep banning me for posting these testimonials. T Walk the Hawk Fitness and T Walk the Hawk 2. And then my YouTube channel, I'm going hard on. That's where most of my content is going to. YouTube.com slash T Walk the Hawk. That's T W A L K D A H U L K. So it's the same name on everything. On TikTok too, but they be deleting my account on there. It might be up when you watch this, it might not be. All right, for all the weed smokers out there, do you mm -hmm. recommend weed? I don't recommend it. I don't judge people to do. I believe inhaling, smoking anything is creating acid in your body and acid in your lungs. On top of that, most of the stuff, especially, especially in America, is grown with hydroponics and chemicals and a bunch of other nonsense. And we know this, and most of the time, when someone smokes weed, when you play basketball with someone who smokes weed, like, man, I gotta stop smoking. That's your body giving you a warning signal that you're damaging your lungs. Or most people that smoke weed, again, not everybody, are less productive, you're more lazy, you start craving unhealthy food, you start eating chips and candy and things like that, and having the munchies. So, these are all things that it can be bad for. Can it be beneficial for people with anxiety and things like that, different strains? I'm sure it can be. I don't recommend it. Again, with me, I've never, I've never been drunk. I've never drank. I don't smoke. I don't, I've never popped a capsule. None of that. That's just, that's just me. And if y'all wonder why I'm using these words, it's because they let me know about the censorship, so we ain't using no. a lot of words on here. <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about when I say capsules, when yeah. I say white coats, hey, all that stuff. Me, they, they hit, they hit me. Yeah, you know how it be in our community. They want, they want to stop this information right, from right. getting to you, so we got to be as careful <laughs> as possible. Uh, T.Y., um, how do you retain so much muscle as a uh, uh, veganism? Like, what, what's some of the best foods you can mm -hmm. use to build up a lot of muscle mass? Yeah, like I said, I come from bodybuilding, but people think because of what I what I teach people to eat that oh I'm supposed to have withered away I'm supposed to have no muscles like you can see the sleeves the sleeves is still is still hugging right I still got big arms I still got the muscle it's because just because you're on an alkaline plant-based diet you can still get the protein but I don't even believe in protein if you're getting enough calories you're getting the healthy carbs you're gonna maintain the muscle all right your body needs amino acids amino acids are the building block of protein Look up what the building block of protein is. It will literally tell you. So if you're getting your amino acids from fru fruits, vegetables, you're getting healthy carbs like wild rice, you're getting your garbanzo beans, you're getting hemp seed, which is a complete plant-based source of protein, meaning it has all nine essential amino acids. You're eating quinoa, which is another complete plant-based source of protein, meaning it has all nine essential amino acids. Because a lot of meat eaters say, oh, well, yeah, it's protein, but it's not a complete protein. Quinoa and hemp seed are. So all you got to do is get your calories in. So you can get like a calorie calculator and you can find out what your maintenance calories are. So maybe you're six foot, maybe you're 200 pounds. So for you, it may take 1800 calories to maintain that weight. So if you wanna get bigger or maintain muscle or build muscle, 
you need to be in a caloric surplus. So you may need to eat 2,200 or 2,500 calories to put on that size. Same thing, same thing for the women. If you want to get thicker thighs and get your booty fat, same thing. You want to be on these same foods and you're eating your vegetables, which are good for, for building, along with the fruit, which is your amino acids. So you do all that and you're tracking your calories. There's no way you're not going to maintain your weight or build muscle, get thicker, get stronger. A lot of the top athletes in the world are plant-based. A lot of bodybuilders, a lot of strength people in strength competitions. Again, you gotta be careful because nowadays they sneak in the soy and everything. I want you all to do an experiment. Go to the grocery store, go to the bread aisle, and I guarantee you out of 20 of the different types of bread, the different brands, seven, 16 to 17 of those is gonna have soy in them. And, and they know that we getting smart with this with this holistic health. They know we getting smart going plant-based or vegan as some people call it. So they're like, oh, they're gonna lay off of the meat and off of the dairy? What we gonna do is, we gonna start making meat made with soy, and now soy is so cheap that the profit margin is gonna be so much more for us. So thanks to them, now we making more money and they still are not improving their health like they think they are. Wow. So yeah, it's always, they always a step ahead, but that's why I'm here to keep y'all keep y'all up to speed. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really an advocate of this, but some vegans, they swear that cane sugar is not harmful since it comes from a cane, right? But I wanna hear your knowledge on the cane sugar as well, cause I'm, I've been a vegan for two years and I know yeah. for a fact cane sugar isn't healthy. But right. let's hear your perspective on this. My perspective is I stay away from all sugar that ain't coming from fruit. Mm. So I don't mess with the cane sugar, I don't mess with the brown sugar, I don't mess with the white sugar. Oh, coconut sugar? Co coconut sugar's not bad. Okay, okay. Yeah, so if it's coming from a coconut, mm -hmm. the fruit, which is your fructose. fructose. So, you know, your fruit is is high, it's highly high. It's going to hydrate you much more than anything else also. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are dehydrated. Right. So when we're dehydrated, our cells are dehydrated. That's causing more health issues. So if our cells are dehydrated, they're not getting enough oxygen, and you got poor blood flow, poor circulation, you got all this inflammation, you're going to have a lot of health issues. And that's why people are coming up with disease after disease and being put on these capsules. All right, see, well, in the world among of diets, mm -hmm. what's the superior diet? Alkaline veganism, fasting, breatharian, fruitarians. What's the what's the superior diet? Well, I mean, with the ones you mentioned, I think it's a combination of, of all of them. Combination about yeah. So if you're on an alkaline, plant-based diet, you're focusing on your your breathing techniques. Mm -hmm. You're getting the sun, mm -hmm. which the sun is your best source of vitamin D3, mm -hmm. which states like Washington have the least sun, so they have a vitamin D3 deficiency there. Mm -hmm. That's why they have the highest rates of people who commit self-harm mm. and are on antidepressants. Wow. So you want to get your sun, like we get in the sun right now, and vitamin D3 from the sun is important because when you're getting your vitamin D3 from these, these supplement companies, right. what they're doing is they're getting that vitamin D3 from sheep, from the wool of sheep. They're straining the oil from the wool of sheep, they're putting that in the capsules and that's what you're getting your vitamin D3 from. So you thought you were vegan not knowing that you're eating sheep oil to get your vitamin D3. That's crazy. But a lot of people don't know this stuff. So get out, get the sun. Then when you get your vitamin D3, you want to make sure you're getting vitamin K2 to help the vitamin D3 assimilate properly in the body. And then vitamin D3 is how your body gets its calcium, your vitamin D. Mm. Hey, t what do you like doing in your spare time? What do I like doing in my spare time? Like I said, I do I do a daily mindset walk on the beach. Mm -hmm. So I do a, about an hour walk, about four miles on the beach every single day. Get my vitamin D from the sun, my vitality from the sun. Because even the word vitamin, we got to break that down. Your vitamin, vita, vitality from the sun. Amen, amen, ra. Because in Kemet, they believed in the sun god. Because mm -hmm. they knew when the sun goes up, all right, that's when I wake up. When it's a sunny day, I'm in a better mood. When the sun goes down, I think it's time to sleep. So we got to start looking back into our history and understanding understanding these things. Yep, re-download, yeah, exactly. You, you shoot me on that. I even think you knew much about that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I'm with it. I'm with yeah. it. I, there's always more to learn, but I've been right, right. I've been researching for a long time. So Okay. Uh, a lot of meat eaters suffer from indigenous people calling, they call it the itis, right? A lot of, a lot of black people call it the itis. They suffer uh -huh. from the itis. How do you always, like, how do you defeat the itis from all the meat eaters watching this video? Because, you know, even though uh, we preach veganism, we preach mm -hmm. alkaline, people still going to eat meat. So how do we, like, how do we heal itis for people who eat even vegan food? Because a lot of people eat vegan food and they still get the itis. So how do you heal the itis? Well, I believe that if you're getting the itis after be eating vegan food, in many cases you're eating unhealthy plant-based foods. Mm -hmm. So we got to realize that just because we're not eating meat and dairy and eggs and all that, we're still eating, like, back to the soil, we're still eating unhealthy foods. 
right? They're adding all these natural flavors, all these artificial preservatives, all of these things. So if you're getting the itis, when you're eating meat, it's because you're eating dead foods. Mm. So if you're eating dead foods for your living body, how do you expect to feel alive? You're going to feel like the food you're eating. You're putting the food in the freezer, which is your is a bunch of dead carcasses in your freezer, and you're wondering why you wake up, you hit your alarm like, ah, I don't feel like getting up this morning. So where, where does the itis, where does that even come from? The itis comes from is your body using its energy to digest and break down foods. Mm. So you're eating these foods that are hard to digest, hard to break down, so now your body, instead of using its energy to heal and energize you for the day, it's sitting there like, man, all right, she just eat this steak again. I gotta break this down. All right, cool. I'm about to use this energy to heal, get him some energy for the day, and then by that time, they done, they done, they done thrown in some a bologna sandwich with cheese. All right, let me use my energy to break this down. All right, cool. We good again. Dang, a Hershey bar. Let me break this down. So all your energy is going to breaking down food every hour of the day. Because when we were in the womb, we were only eating the amniotic fluid three times per day. In the morning, midday, and in the evening. When we get out, what we learn is, oh, if I want my metabolism to be where it's got to be, I got to eat every two hours, and I need a protein bar in between that, and oh I need my. a snack here yeah. on lunch break, and then I need a snack, and then I need dinner. <laughs> then on the way home from a stressful day at work, I'm going to stop by and see all the big red signs, the number one color of marketing, red and yellow, <laughs> McDonald's, Burger King, Carl's Jr., Arby's, all that. Let me grab that. <laughs> then you get home, and it's time for dinner. Then you need a milkshake. Like, it's always something. So, t Walk in the herbalist and healing community, I want to be on. I want you to be honest with me. What, what's your biggest pet peeve in the herbalist and healing community? Uh, biggest pet peeve is what I mentioned earlier about you know the. Not that there's lack of community, I just like to see more and less drama, but to switch it up, I would say the lack of marketing. Because, you know, we gotta understand that these companies, these fast food chains, everywhere you go, it's marketing. They're spending billions to keep our people sick. So therefore, if we're not practicing marketing, we're setting ourselves back. That's why you hear me scream. That's why I'll yell. That's why I say, stop eating this, because if I start with, these are the best three foods to help with high blood pressure. It, nobody listens and gets, it gets way less views. So I focus heavily on marketing. Like I said, targeting the youth. I think that's a key point because I've studied from a lot of people over the years. And I'll mention, I'll mention a few more people, right? But you ain't, you ain't marketing yourself better than Drake. You ain't marketing yourself better than these well-known rappers. They knew how to dress to get people's attention. They knew how to talk. So I highly recommend a lot of us out there learn marketing, learn digital marketing. Because with me, I focus on digital marketing to grow my following, to get people, to get my program, because I know my program works, which is what I post the testimonials from. So the more people I can get in front of, the more people I can get to share my videos, because of maybe my crazy antics that a lot of people don't like, it's going to help thousands of more right, people. Because right. now somebody shares it who doesn't like me, they share it to somebody else who doesn't like me. Before you know it, one of their followers is going to have one of these issues, high blood pressure, cholesterol, cancer, diabetes, whatever, and now I help that person. All because I marketed myself and did something crazy that caught people's attention. So that's really it. I think that's just something, something cool to throw out there that I would like to see versus, you know, the, sa the same old, same old things. I think it will help, help more people. But I'm not knocking anybody that's still sticking to what they know. Right. But again, sometimes you don't know what you don't know and you don't realize that you could be helping way more people by knowing how to market yourself. Right. In my honest opinion, there's nothing wrong with having a gimmick because it's mm -hmm. about the motive. That motive is to help people who is a flying F exactly about thing, you know what I'm saying it don't matter it's about what your motive is yeah as, as long as you're not deceiving people mm -hmm. like for me like I said I'll start off like 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 I just mentioned like stop eating this pay attention and I'll throw the eggs at the screen <laughs> or something like that because that's going to get more attention to me saying here's why you shouldn't eat eggs right well you shouldn't eat eggs because the mucus in them with TikTok now, you swipe, 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 you're gone. Nobody's watching that. <laughs> like, let's keep it real. <laughs> yeah, we, we live in a world where people's attention spans is really, it's really like, it's, it's outrageous. Man, it's outrageous. And yeah. then I even come up with little phrases, like, and obviously sex sells. So I talk a lot about, I tie sex into like a lot of things, what I say. So a lot of things I say, like one of my most well-known phrases that people will comment in my lives and things like that is instead of telling people, look at the nutrition label when you're shopping. I say, get freaky when you're grocery shopping, smack that thing, 
hit it from the back, bend it over, arch the back, and put your face in it. Like, that's a much more eye-catching way of saying, look at the nutrition label. Right. And people love that. When it comes to coconut water, if it ain't pink, don't drink, because coconut have a specific enzyme in them that makes it turn pink when it hits oxygen after a specific point in time. So that's another way to tell people to stop eating that fake coconut water that's in them aluminum cans. Uh, if the watermelon ain't got black seeds, you don't need. It's a better way of telling people to, hey, stay away from that fake fruit without the seeds. If it's bitter, if it's, if it's bitter, it's better. Mm -hmm. Because bitters help improve your health. It may not taste the best. It's not supposed to taste like Kool-Aid, but this tonic right here is going to help you with all those issues. So it's just different plays on marketing. Again, I'm not saying the way I'm doing is the right way. Your way is the wrong. But I think it, it makes it more fun. When you make healing fun, more people want to participate. Just like anything. Right, right. All right. See what? What, what are some places you want to visit this year and next year all around the world? Man, I, I got to start traveling more. I travel a good amount, but really I got to hit up Puerto Rico. I got to hit up Africa. I haven't been to Africa yet. Uh, I got to hit up Hawaii. And I want to do Tokyo. Those are like four... <laughs> Four of my main places. I always go to DR. Mm -hmm. I'm actually about to go to DR next week. Mm -hmm. I always go to Mexico, different areas of Mexico, Aruba. So I switch it up. I travel a lot in the States. Like I said, I'm from West Virginia. I moved to Maryland. Then I moved to Utah. Then I moved to Hollywood, California. Now I'm back in Miami. So I've been I've been moving around over the past, past four or five years. And it's good to switch it up because what a lot of people don't understand is you have, just how you have the left side and the right side of your brain, when you travel, it unlocks different 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 areas of your brain to keep it simple right because you got to understand on this side of the planet when we're unhealthy what are we we're obese we're high body fat on the other side of the planet when we're unhealthy malnutrition so it's complete opposite on this side we drive on a on the right side on that side they drive on the left so when you travel they say a genius is a whole brain thinker it just means they have more they have an improved memory and they've learned how to tie their left side to the right side so when we travel that's us tying our left side to our right side that'll take you next level mentally mm. health wise financially with your family allow your family to see the world start your kids young like these are all important factors mm. like the whole world's here for a reason for us to see it right 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 i'm loving it i'm loving it i'm loving it mm -hmm. what, what's some of the most craziest things as a you learned as a lesson this year that brought you to the core truth about yourself this is a very deep question oh that is deep mm -hmm. one thing i realized about myself when i tell my story and things like that which we haven't got too in depth about my story is learning that man when you take a chance on yourself when you don't care what people think when you take a risk when you go outside the box how valuable it can be to yourself. They're plant-based, so it's definitely doable. All right, last question, but not least. What's the most important action a man should do every day to become successful? Mm, that's a good What's question. Is that either push up semen retention, getting the sun, changing a diet, you know what I'm saying, taking cold showers, the list goes on and on. Man, and let me take my shades off, because yeah. a lot of people, you know, that's, that's part of the marketing, but I want you to see my eyes at least once in this interview. But for me, the most important thing is to talk to yourself. Like, people think you're crazy. I talk to myself more than I talk to other people. I keep to myself, because it's too much negative energy, but... In the meantime, I'm talking to myself. And when I'm talking to myself, it's positive affirmations. I'm telling myself, like I said, I can do this. It's easy, it's easy. Hold up, people saying this is hard, it's easy. I wanna make money, it's easy. I wanna help people heal, it's easy. And I wanna drive you to understand that it's easy. Whatever you're going through in your life, if you're dealing with anxiety like I was, if you're dealing with severe back pain like I was, if you're dealing with sleep apnea like I was, if you're broke like I was two years ago, if you're in any of these situations, if you're, if you're from a small town or a lesser known city or state, like I was with 300 people, know that it's easy and you can still do it. So positive, self-talk, knowing that it's possible, telling yourself it's possible, looking in the mirror, changing the screensaver on your phone from Michael Jordan Duncan to this month, these are the goals I'm gonna accomplish. I'm gonna do this. This is gonna happen by this date. I'm gonna make this happen. It's easy. That's what you gotta do. That's what I highly recommend to take yourself next level. It's positive self-talk. Yes, that was the finalization of this interview. See what you got anything else you want to say to be on Friday before we wrap this up? Yeah, for sure. I know uh, me and you had spoke about teaching people some things about, about finance. Obviously, I'm doing good now. Again, two years ago, I was broke. So, 
Key things, learn how to market yourself. What's gonna make you stand out, make you different from everybody else? Because if you look like everybody else and whatever your, your, your niche is, which is your lane, what you teach, it's gonna be hard to stand out. Also, there's many other ways to get money, right? Don't think you have to do a nine to five and deal with that boss that you don't like, the coworkers you don't like, which is gonna bring your energy down, which is gonna make you depressed, stressed, which is gonna make your anxiety levels go up. You have to figure out a way to get out of there. And when it comes to eating healthy, a lot of people will say, it's hard to eat healthy because it's expensive. So therefore, you have to take accountability and I will tell you, yes, it can cost more. Not saying there's not many cheap options because there are, that's you making an excuse. Again, we're not doing excuses. But if you wanna go to Whole Foods, it's gonna cost you more than your standard grocery store. That's, that's 100% correct. So now you gotta say, okay, I gotta figure out how to get this money. And how you're gonna get this money is help out more people. The more people you help, the more value you bring to this world, the more you'll get back. But there's also many other things. Get into crypto. One of the things I did, I got Ethereum when it was $350 per coin. Last year it went up to $4,000 per coin. So now you just profited $3,700 off of every coin that you bought. So when you see a drop, get in. Ethereum's a good coin because Bitcoin, all the, all the cryptos, all the little NFTs, all this stuff y'all seeing now, they got to use Ethereum to function. So that's something. Also, a lot of people, when it comes to having a home, an easy thing you can do is Airbnb. So you say, well, what if I don't have money for an Airbnb? A lot of you have money, you don't even know that you have money. Because sadly, when you're uneducated financially, what you find is you get a house. The first thing you do is get a house. Because if you get a house, you post it on Facebook, it's going to get more likes than any other post, right? Everybody's like, oh, I can't believe you got my first house. You're going to post a picture with your significant other. People are going to love it. Not knowing that's not an asset because you're living in it. Only time you should be getting a house is if you're using it for Airbnb or to rent. Or if you're getting it, knowing the housing market is gonna go up. So right now, at the time of this interview, the housing market is up. So many of you may have made that decision of getting a house thinking it was an asset when it wasn't. This is your chance to turn that in into an asset. What you can do is the housing market is up. So that means you have more equity in your home now than ever before. So now you can pull from that equity in your home because you may not have 10,000, 30,000, 50,000 in your bank account are sitting around. Because you can take that 30, 40, 50,000 from your home, the equity from it, you can pull that from it, take those profits, now you can get an Airbnb set up. You got enough to get furniture, you got enough to get a management team, and now one Airbnb, if you do the, uh, the property research, the market research properly, that's gonna make you after, after the mortgage, after the rent, that's gonna make you 2,500 to 3,000 per month. Many people, especially where I'm from in West Virginia, they're only making about 3,000, 4,000 a month. So now that one property allows you to quit your job. So that's just some free game. And if y'all watching this, if y'all liking this information and y'all know me, y'all know y'all need to comment on this video on Beyond 5D, comment free game, because I just gave y'all a bunch of free game, but I also want to show love to y'all. So what I want to do to the Beyond 5D family is, what you need to do now, if you want the free guide of foods to eat, and free guide of foods to avoid, my recommendations, how I've been able to post brand new testimonials every single day for over two years and five months straight, text the word T-Walk, T-W-A-L-K, to the phone number 74121 to get that free guide. But also, what I wanna do for y'all, this is something I ain't never done before. I'm gonna do something like, we'll do $200. If you subscribe to Beyond 5D, come over, follow me, T Walk Dog Fitness, T Walk Dog 2. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash T Walk Dog or search T Walk Dog on YouTube. Just comment, show love on this interview, on this video. Comment, show love if this helped in any way, if you got any motivation, if you got any knowledge on health, if this helped spark your mind in any single way. Comment below. I'm going to go live on my Instagram page as soon as this drops. I'll be announcing the date and I'll choose a winner from the comment section. I'm going to cash out one of y'all 200 bucks just to do it. Just to show love. So hopefully y'all like this interview. If not, this ain't the pace for y'all because if you ain't ready to expand your mind on health, knowledge, finance, mindset, take you and your family next level, then you need to change your mindset. And your mindset may be that because you got all these foods damaging the neurotransmitters in your brain and making you think these negative thoughts. So it's time to rewire yourself and it starts from the inside. All right.
piece of the tribe. If you're looking to get any crystal, go to beyond5d.online. On beyond5d.online, we also do have a section where you can see what crystal actually benefits you. You will receive a crystal with a free gift and also do make sure that you guys do leave a comment. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.